So to start out here with this 302 is uh, with these AFR heads and we got some performance uh, roller hydraulic lifters. Uh, when I was determining my push rod length, I noticed that uh, I had to have my lifters in first before my heads. Now on flat tappet cam stuff, you can get the lifters out, but on this particular engine and this setup, we're gonna have to go ahead and put our lifters in before we put our heads on. So that's something you wanna be mindful of. You kinda of wanna check your fitment before you go ahead and bolt your heads down in case you can't get your lifters in. So um, luckily we, uh, we noticed this and we're gonna go ahead and put it together without having to backtrack. So first things first, we have our, uh, our Ford Performance hydraulic lifters. Now these are a higher RPM model that aren't supposed to, uh, I guess, bleed down at higher RPM. So we'll see if they're any better or not, but they were only about $30 extra than the OEM replacement. Um, but they should be good quality lifters. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is use this, uh, this engine assembly loop has quite a bit of graphite. I guess it's a molly graphite compound and it's supposed to uh, really help when we light our engine off for the first time where uh, you know we're not just scoring everything because we don't have any oil up to anything yet. So we're gonna go ahead and um, assemble with this stuff. It's real good, I've used it on many engine builds. So, first things first, I guess, is we're just going to start getting our lifters here, and um, they got to go in these bores, and uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is put a liberal amount here on our roller tip that meets our cam. Now, when I installed my cam, I already covered my cam in this, so it should be good, and we're going to also slap it on the sides here where it runs within its lifter bore. And then we're gonna go ahead and just slide them on in. When we get these all in, we'll uh, um, get to putting our dog bones in. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and do that same uh, that I did with this lifter and we're gonna get all 16 of these in here. Okay, so once we have our lifters all lubed up and in our engine here, we're going to go ahead and install our dog bones. Now, uh, um, you notice here, if you have them good and cleaned up, that they have, uh, um, they're inscribed with up. So obviously that's going to be facing up towards the intake manifold. So we're going to put a good amount of um, our assembly lubricant here on the sides where it contacts the side of our lifter and then we're going to go ahead and install all of these and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and have all my uh, um, up markings here facing the front of my engine but it really doesn't matter they're all the same and it's a uniform piece but uh, we're going to go ahead and get all those good and lubed up and installed and then we'll move on to installing our a hold down spider for these dog bones. Okay, so once we have our lifters and our dog bones on, our next piece we're going to go ahead and install is our lifter spider, as some refer to it, or uh, our uh, dog bone hold down is really what it is. So. Um, we're going to go ahead and run that in. Um, something to be aware of is uh, the threading on, or I guess the drilling uh, for these bolts that hold this lifter spider down actually go down and you can see the cam bearing uh, at the bottom of that uh, drill bore. So you want to be careful if you don't have your original hardware you want to really be mindful of that and you don't want to go down and hit that cam bearings. You're going to mess your cam bearings up and then you're going to be uh, um, obviously having to pull your cam back out, put new cam bearings in and that's really just a mess. So you don't want to get in one of those situations. 
So uh, now I got this engine partially disassembled. It was missing some hardware, so I had to go out and buy some bolts. Now, um, they're grade five, so they'll hold up just fine, and I've ground them down, so uh, they're plenty far away from those cam bearings, but still have enough holding pressure. But anyway, I want to make a mention of that. That's something to be mindful of. Most people, I hope you have your original hardware, but uh, if you don't, that's something to be aware of. So we're just going to simply run our bolts in and they should uh, go in without much obstruction at all and as you can see there it locates the hold downs on the centers of the dog bones. So I'm going to get these uh, snugged up here and then we'll go ahead and get them torqued down. So we're just going to go ahead and tighten these nice and slow and they should go down real easy so if uh, they bind up or anything you're going to want to stop and uh, find out why because that's really abnormal. Alright so at this point we're ready to uh, torque this down and it's not necessarily something that needs to be under a torque usually if they're good and snug they'll be just fine. I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, in inch pound wrench and tighten these down to uh, about five or six foot pounds so uh, you know about 70 inch pounds or so should be good but uh, you know, really it doesn't take too much and there we are at this point we have all our lifter assembly bolted in and we're ready to move on to our heads alright so with uh, Moving on to our head assembly here, you always want to make sure that all your mating surfaces are free of oil and any debris. So uh, what I like to do is take a fairly clean towel and either a carburetor cleaner or paint thinner or uh, something pretty powerful here and go around all the surfaces right before I uh, put the heads on. Now you can do it you know, a few days before when you're doing other stuff, but they're gonna, it's going to get dirty again and you're going to want to clean it. Uh, right before you install your head gaskets and all that because you want the best possible seal that you can get. So I'm going to go ahead and um, wipe down these main surfaces and keep on rolling. Okay, so once you have your head surface and your block surface cleaned. Um, you, I also want to mention that I have already ran a thread chaser down through our head bolt holes. You want to make sure that your threads are good and clean so that when you go to do your torque, you know that you're getting proper torque. So you don't want to rely on an engine boiling to even clean this up because you're still going to pull dirt. Um, you know, out of that threading. So anyway, the next thing is I always like to buy these new head locating dowel pins. I don't really like to reuse the old ones. So uh, they're only about $5. So we're just going to take these and um, two of them go here at the bottom of our uh, mating surface and we'll get these put in. Alright, so once we have our dowel pins in here, we can go ahead and install our head gaskets. And uh, I like to use these, um, they're more per of a performance head gasket, and I'll put the link in the description, but they have a uh, known compressed thickness. So these in particular are uh, 39,000, so that will give us really good quench on our engine, since we have zero piston to, to uh, deck height here. So it's a uh, it's pretty good situation so anyway with our head gasket um, you don't use any sealer obviously and uh, on one side it'll say front and that means facing towards the front of the engine so and it could be on the back side of the um, on these particular head gaskets it's on both sides but um, what that this means here is it's just going to face towards the front of the engine so you want to be uh, you know Take care when you're sliding them over this, these dowel pins. You don't want to gall them all up. Sometimes it 
takes a little work, but just be patient and then they'll uh, drop right down in. All right, so at this point, we have our head gasket on. We're gonna go ahead and drop our AFR head on there and uh, be mindful after you've cleaned the mating surface so you don't touch it with any oil on your hands. So, uh, you know, as you see here, I got a um, finger in the exhaust port and then I'm holding the intake ports. And these aluminum heads are pretty light and easy to work with. So we're just gonna go ahead and line these up with the dowel fins. The less uh, moving around of the engine that you can do, the better. But um, anyway, I wanna be careful. Uh, in most cases, this one down and there we are. Now in most cases when I do this, I like to have the engine tilted up here so you know you're sitting flat but for the sake of the camera there we had it tilted to uh, you know display what we were doing but when you're doing it yourself it's you're at a huge advantage to have the engine um, on your engine stand in this orientation so you can just set your head right down in onto your engine block. Okay so now with our head installed and uh, we're now at the point to install our head studs and this is where it starts to get a little more different with uh, your aluminum heads like these AFR heads so um, you know I feel like if you're going to fork over the extra cash for some aluminum heads it's well worth your time to go with using head studs because they uh, um, they're a lot easier on your head they're not going to damage it and overall they're really just a better product so I believe I got these ARP head studs here for about 60 bucks so um, they're a little bit of an investment but if you got a high compression engine that you're really beating on like i'm sure what is uh, going to be the fate of this engine um, you're going to want to make sure that you have some head studs they're always a good investment so <clears throat> anyway the first thing i did is they uh, they have a lot of assembly grease and whatnot on them so that they don't rust in their packaging so I went ahead and I took some car cleaner and I sprayed off our threads that are going to go into the block. Now I did this because we're going to use this high temp uh, thread sealer because some of these bolts go into the water jacket of the engine and we don't want to be leaking coolant obviously. So we're going to go ahead and coat them up with this thread sealant and like I said we, I sprayed off with car cleaner. so. Uh, we really get a good sealing compound on these threads. And the sealer also works as a lubricant, so when you're torquing down your head bolts, it doesn't mess with your torque, but on head studs, we're gonna be all the way down and fully seated, and the only movement we're gonna have is up here on our nut. So uh, we should be good to go with these. So anyway, we're just gonna take our head studs and apply a good liberal amount of sealer here to our threads and we're just going to work it together here with uh, another head stud. Now technically only these lower head studs have to go into the coolant passages but I'm just going to go ahead and um, apply this sealer to all my head bolts. Uh, it works good as an anti-seize if nothing else. So. Anyway, so we got a good healthy amount of sealer on there and we might put a little bit more on, better, uh, um, more than less I figure. So anyway, we're just going to go ahead and run these down into our block and uh, they should go in fairly easy if you ran a thread chaser down through uh, your head threads here. So as you can see here, I can just get these in by hand. But if you do um, come up, run into something where it's difficult to get them in, uh, these ARP head studs are real nice where they have an Allen key deal here where we can, uh, a 3 16 where we can use that to fully see them. So I'm gonna get these in and we'll check them with our Allen key and then uh, we'll move on to Parking these babies down. OK, 
Okay, so once you have your uh, head studs run down in here, we're going to go ahead and install our washers and our nuts. And again, this is uh, really nice because it doesn't gall up your aluminum head uh, like your standard head bolts would. So um, to get proper torque, we want a, um, a little bit of lubrication here on our um, threads and on our washers. So I'm just going to go ahead and use our engine assembly lube again because it's not going to um, run down our studs and get to our sealer and you know mess with that. So we're just going to go ahead and you know it gets kind of messy, but you know just. Uh, Get everything good and oiled up and set on there, and then we'll move on to uh, snugging these up and getting these torqued down to their proper uh, torque spec for the AFR heads. So we're just going to go ahead and start from the center and then work our way out in a crisscross pattern. So pretty, pretty simple here. So right now we're going to 25 foot-pounds. Now usually you want to have your motor stand braced here. As you see, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use my foot. But when you start to get up in the higher torque values, you're really going to have to have this brace or it's going to try and, you know, your motor stand's going to start walking away from you. So anyway, we'll get these all to, uh, up to the foot-pounds that are required and uh, for our final torque, we'll check back. Okay, so now we have all of our head bolts successfully torqued down and uh, AFR specifically specified to tighten our top uh, studs to 80 foot-pounds and our lower studs to 70 foot-pounds, so that's what we've done here. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to put on this other head and then we'll move to the uh, rocker and push rod assembly, so, so far so good.